five. You can see Kaiwen there on the left, Mehdi on the right. We're gonna get a first look at what these guys are playing. We've not seen either of them on stream up until this point, so it's news to us, but you were saying Mady is, is known for playing some off the wall stuff, so maybe we'll be surprised here. Yeah, or maybe we'll it'll just quickly. be Rush Ram and Charizards all around. <laughs> it sure could be. You never know. Sometimes even the, the rogue players have to accept defeat and play a meta deck. Gotta standardize in the name of a world championship title. <laughs> It is much more difficult to find those off-the-wall decks when the meta is less well explored, which right now it's it's very fresh. Absolutely, but we'll just have to wait and see what these two players have brought to the event. I know Kaiwen used uh, Pikachu and Zekrom a lot through the season. Mm -hmm. It's what he used to get top four at the Oceania International Championships, and that deck is still very powerful, so he may have brought it to this event as well. For Medi, we'll see. Um, Anything is possible. I've seen a Pidgey. I've seen a Macargo GX. I've you've seen, seen it all. a Pidgey. You've seen it all. <laughs> it looks like a, a fire deck and a mulligan for Medi. Kaiwen did manage to find a basic Pokemon. Yeah, we'll see if it's a... Well, fire energy doesn't tell you very much these days. Could be a Reshiram and Charizard deck. Could be a Blacephalon GX deck. Could be a Mewtwo and Mew GX deck. You just don't know. It looks like this may be similar to what we saw earlier with Torrid Reckliff, though, with the Reshiram and Charizard GX ability-based deck. So this will be a classic Pikachu and Zekrom versus Reshiram and Charizard. And oh no, both Raichu and Alolan Raichu are prized for Kaiwen. That could be devastating in this matchup. It's been a really influential card so far today. We saw it on the mainstream in the previous round, getting Justin Bocario win versus Rahul Reddy. Um, so certainly something that Kaiwin will be feeling the absence of here as both of them are prized. But we're getting things underway. Round number five for the Pokemon trading card game has begun. Yeah, and if you're watching, get on social media. You can use the hashtag PlayPokemon. You can also Play use Pokemon. the hashtag Pokemon Worlds. Best that is also the oh. event-specific hashtag if you want to join the conversation. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I like it. Of course, we've also got the uh, main stage going right now. I believe Pokken is going to be finishing up there in a little bit. So if you're uh, interested in watching the finals of that, open another tab, open another browser of your choice. Yeah, Pokken Tournament DX has been exciting to watch throughout this weekend. Even if I have no idea what's happening, it's still a lot of fun to watch. I mean, I've just taken to sitting next to Chef whenever he's out there watching. He's uh, one of the commentators, along with D1 and Burnside, and he just sort of explains things to me. <laughs> it's a very exciting game to it watch. Is, yeah. A lot of fun, but uh, of course, we are biased towards the Pokemon <laughs> trading card game. So here we see Kaiwin with a Stellar Wish from Jirachi, and then Faulkner to find that Electromagnetic Radar. That's the, the most popular turn one for any lightning type deck right now is just be able to search out those GX Pokemon, get that to Dene GX if your hand is not so great, um, and be able to get another chance at getting what you want. Uh, my eyes can't look. It's too shiny. Everything in his deck is rainbow, maximum rarity. I'm the one with the eye problems today. <laughs> so if you're blinded and I'm having allergy attacks every 20 minutes, this is going to be hard. Yeah, I believe that's Zara Aura GX and Pikachu and Zekrom GX. Those are the two lightning Pokemon GX of choice for Kaiwen. And yeah, Electromagnetic Radar is excellent in this deck. It's a very narrow and specific card. Searches for just two lightning Pokemon GX. And if you're playing in the expanded format, you can grab lightning Pokemon EX. Um, but yeah, it, it's only seen pretty much in this deck. And you can see why. You had Ultra Ball for a long time, which was discard two cards, go search for any Pokemon. But what if you could Ultra Ball for two of your best Lightning GXs instead, including Dedenne GX, which can then Dede change and draw six cards. It's just a flexible and incredible card that makes your first couple turns very smooth. Definitely a large part of why Pikachu and Zekrom has been so popular is that it's been able to sort of weather the storm of the rotation better than most decks. Ultra Ball turned into Ultra Magnetic, or uh, Electromagnetic Radar. Um, the loss of Tapu Lele GX is okay because Dedenne GX is like a Tapu Lele and a supporter all in one. It's just a very consistent deck despite all of the rotations. Absolutely. We see Mehdi plays down the giant hearth 
discards a card to search for two fire energy, and in the process, checking to see what is in his prize cards. This is an important thing to do if you're new to the Pokemon trading card game. Uh, you have to start the game with six of your cards face down in your prize cards. You don't have access to them until you start knocking out your opponent's Pokemon. So it's important to look through your deck and see which cards will I not have access to. There are very important things that uh, hold a deck together and can influence your decisions. So if you can, whenever you search your deck for the first time, just take a quick look, search for those important cards, and make sure you can actually play them this game. Wow, I feel like that should be a segment. <laughs> hmm. Something about getting better. Yeah, improvement yeah. in general. <laughs> We should get Jeremy on that. I yeah. think he'd be good. Uh, we saw Tord playing pretty much exactly this deck earlier today, and he was running something like 18 fire energy. Yeah. So obviously you need, you need fuel for the hearth um, and to be able to use the ability of that nine tails, nine temptations, I believe. Indeed, yeah. Which uh, acts sort of as a Lysander, but you need, you need a lot of fuel for the fire here. So this deck just requires a lot of room dedicated to simply basic energy. Yeah, this is a somewhat tricky start for Mehdi. Um, so he's got a switch into the Vulpix, which is now riding that escape board. And might see the Dede change here. Yeah, all right, and we will. So Dedede GX is always iffy to put down against a Pikachu and Zekrom deck. Um, it, of course, has 160 HP, so if they can ever get that Tag Bolt GX off, it can target down to Denny GX, hit it for 170, and take two easy prize cards on it. So it can be risky to put down, uh, but if you do have that Mew with a Bench Barrier in your deck, that, that takes away the risk. Yeah, to Denny's certainly less of a liability now that Guzma's rotated, but Pikachu and Zekrom is still in a good position to be able to take advantage of it. And a you know, four or five prize swing, depending on what's knocked out with the Tag Bolt, would be almost enough to win the game right by that itself. Yeah, so this, this many matchup, will want to avoid that. This matchup has changed a little bit now that Raichu and Alolan Raichu has come out. Uh, in the past, you would typically save your GX attack for Tag Bolt or for uh, Tapu Koko GX's Tapu Thunder GX. And... Now you don't have access to Tapu Koko GX, and Raichu and Alolan Raichu has the Lightning Ride GX attack, um, which can hit up to 250 damage, and with Electro Power that lets you knock out tag teams in one hit. So that's typically your preferred GX attack now, but with both of them in the prizes, we'll see what happens. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Hitting the Jirachi for weakness and still just short of being able to knock yeah. it out without rage. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I loved about playing the Mewtwo and Mew deck with the rainbow energy is you could sometimes put a rainbow energy on your Pokemon and then outrage for more damage. It's pretty sweet. You can get a turn one outrage knockout if you put a rainbow on your Restroom and Charizard. Yeah, there's not many options for attacking with two energy in that deck outside of the Solgaleo GX. Yeah. All right, we'll see if Kaiwen can kick things off with a full blitz on his second turn of the game. This is generally where you need to start attacking with Pikachu and Zekrom. Um, it's all about early aggression and then snowballing that early aggression into a bigger lead, powering up your Pokemon with that full blitz and just trying to play Electro Powers. Just take knockouts as fast as you can. You can't give these other decks time to set up, otherwise you will eventually get overpowered. Uh, in terms of HP, Pikachu and Zekrom GX is on the low end, as weird as that sounds, with just 240, but it gives up three prize cards when it's knocked out. This is looking good, though. Uh, he's already guaranteed himself a full blitz. <laughs> he's got an Electro Power. He's going to draw six fresh cards. And yeah, with that Thunder Mountain, he has enough energy already attached to be able to use Full Blitz. He will get three more energy from the deck, which he can use to power up Tag Bolt, potentially, or he can put onto one of his benched Pokemon. Yeah, and I couldn't see if he actually played the Electro Power or just discarded it. There can be concerns of walking into Outrage from yeah. Restoram and Charizard GX, but I don't think there's a big difference between 150 and 180. It's tough to say. He did just put it directly in the discard. Yeah, we'll find out. I think you're safe to play it. 
and it plays around like giant potions and that kind of stuff. But no, I don't think oh, he did. 50. Okay, so looks like he did just choose to discard it. Regardless, if you're going to be able to knock out the Rush Ram and Charizard with two hits, I suppose it's just not worth it to potentially walk into a, a bad situation. Yeah, the only reason I can think of is if your opponent's playing, you know, mixed herbs, great potions, mm -hmm. uh, more damage is better. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, for sure. We were seeing um, Rahul running great potion in his version of Rushazard, but I, I don't believe we'll see it in this variant. I it's always possible, though. Great potion, you'll probably see mixed herbs. Almost definitely no. Mm -hmm. Um, but you saw Matty, when he went to draw his card for the turn, drew a fire energy, and he flicked it like, now you show up. Uh, he <laughs> played Welder. Yeah. yeah, he played Welder on the first turn, but didn't actually attach for the turn. So he actually is kind of behind in energy, which is really mm -hmm. annoying in this matchup. And we'll see if he can recover. His rest room and Charizard has taken a big hit. See if he can respond this turn with Just the one? some kind of attack. Uh, he can at least outrage, but that just doesn't seem like a great option to me. You can outrage for a bunch of damage, and then your opponent simply knocks out your Reshram and Charizard GX, and you start the game down three prize cards. Really shows the the risk, the downside mm -hmm. of these tag teams. So Medi is going to have to formulate some kind of game plan here. Uh, Kaiwen has done everything he's needed to do so far. Got the turn to full blitz with Pikachu and Zekrom. He's got three energy on the benched one and is setting himself up to just fire off huge attacks every turn. Um, Eddie is going to attach an energy to that Turtonator. That is something that can do a lot of damage at once with that explosive jet. And if he can find a welder, a couple fire energy, and then a switch... He could just burst out of nowhere for 250 and knock out this Pikachu and Zekrom. He did put an additional welder back into the deck at the beginning of the turn, but it doesn't look like he's found one. Uh, yeah, the last card in his hand looks like a welder to me. Uh, just trying to figure maybe. out the best sequencing here. I don't think he's played a supporter yet. No, just the pal pad and the dead A change. Here's where you try to decide how much of a risk you want to take. And then we actually see the Heatran GX as well. So that is another Pokemon that can oh, yeah. attack for a bunch of damage if you had a lot of energy in play. One of the new cards from Unified Minds making an appearance in this Rush Ram and Charizard deck. It doesn't look great at first, and then you start playing with the card and you just constantly impressed and how many situations you're like, oh, I'm happy I have Heatran GX in my deck. That's weird. <laughs> I need to do 130 this turn. Okay, that's cool. I need to do 300 damage this turn. Okay, do. that's cool. And it's just a regular GX, not a tag team. So there is a lot of power behind uh, using a regular GX, only giving up two prizes as opposed to three. Getting two energy off of the giant hearth, weldering it onto the Turtonator on the bench. But uh, he knows I need to protect my bench now that there are two Dedenne GX out here. It's time to put up a barrier and say, no thank you, Tag Bolt GX. I don't need to lose five prizes in one turn. That seems excessive. Now, he did draw the switch, but it might be a little bit too much to commit. You would have have to burn all five of your energy in play if you wanted to attack with the Turtonator. So just going to take a more conservative route. Outrage for 200, or 180. Sorry, I keep thinking he played the Electro Power, but it's um, 180 damage, 30 plus the 150 on Reshram and Charizard. And now Kaiwen has to make a choice. He's certainly going to get a knockout this turn, but does he want to attack with a fresh Pokemon? Um... Looks like the answer is no. He's just going to commit to the active and try to power up perhaps for a big tag bolt later, even though that Mew is going to block the bench damage. We may see a full blitz onto Zeraora GX instead. 
All right, and he is going to get the knockout. He's going to take three prizes here. Mm. Pull some one, energy from the deck. One lightning left in his deck. That is... That's a pretty light lightning line. It's not a quite... Uh, that is a small blitz, not a full blitz. It's still full damage, but it's not quite the blitz you're looking for, you know? Yeah. It's more like a full spark. <laughs> The jaunt, it was, it was fast, but, you know, could have been better. Yeah. It's still fine. He's He's got two Pokemon that are still able to fully attack and threaten. That Zero Aura will be ready to go soon enough. Yeah, I think he got a Lightning out of his prizes, maybe he's, a couple. He's got three in hand, it looks like. Yeah. That can happen. Sometimes the Lightning energy are in your hand, so you can't take them out of your deck for full Blitz. So now Maddie is going to have to find some way to uh, knock out this Pikachu in Zekrom GX. It only has 60 HP left. It looks like he's going to go for Victini Prism Star as a potential option. Although he does not have a Welder this turn, so he's going to have to attack with Turtonator. And he is deliberately not benching any more tag teams. His opponent is at three prize cards, so he has just stuck to leaving those two Dedenne GX on board. And with the Mew saying, all right, you cannot win next turn. You can't mm -hmm. take three prize cards. Maybe I can force you into an awkward situation where you can't win next turn, but I can. That's smart. He was behind by a few prize cards. Now he's been able to Whoa. tie things up and wants to just give himself as much time as he possibly can. Okay, so Kaiwen uses Jirachi's Stellar Wish, and in his top five cards we see Cyrus Prism Star. This oh. is not a card we see very often. Uh, you can only play it if your active Pokemon is water or metal. And basically your opponent keeps two of their bench Pokemon and they shuffle the rest in. So this can put your opponent in a very awkward situation. I don't know if it's worth it here. Uh, it would force Medi to shuffle in either the Mew or the Ninetales probably. Mm -hmm. And I don't think- Victini. Yeah, and I don't think that's a big enough impact because you then open up bench space for your opponent. Uh, you can then replay to Dene GX and uh, Dede change later. So Kaiwen saying, no, this is not the right time for Cyrus Prism Star, which to be honest, I haven't found. The right time. Yeah. <laughs> mm. There are some crazy combos you can pull off with that card, but. Um, is there an errata on that card when it was initially? Yeah. Like, made? That is the correct version. Yeah. Maybe it's a card that will come in handy. Certainly Kaiwen has his reasons for putting it in the deck, but right yeah. now he, he wants those Dedenne to be trapped yeah, where they is, are. It is excellent in some matchups, but uh, this might not be one of them. And we see another Stellar Wish. Kaiwen opting to use this Jirachi version of the Pikachu and Zekrom deck. We've seen a lot of more kind of turbo variants that don't use Jirachi anymore. Just straight up GXs, play your Dedenne GX, draw through your deck as fast as you can. But there's nothing wrong with a good old Stellar Wish. Uh, ever since Jirachi came out, it's been one of the, the best consistency engines. You know, you Stellar Wish with Jirachi, you put an escape board on it, and it somehow flies away. And now we see Zapdos come down, another card we don't see as much of, but with the Electro Power, if he has a switch, he can switch into the Zapdos, and Thunderous Assault for the knockout. So yeah, it used to be three or four Zapdos. <laughs> and in a tournament, pretty much dominated by tag teams in Pokemon GX. We're seeing some regular Pokemon duke it out here. He actually opts to discard Raichu and Alolan Raichu with the giant hearth. It's one that he pulled off of his prize cards. His both were prized originally. Yeah, and the judge is correctly uh, pointing out that you are still supposed to search your deck with Giant Hearth even if you opt to fail it, so you do you need to, to shuffle. shuffle your deck. Makes sense. So I don't think there will be any penalty addressed there, but something to keep in mind. That's a very minor thing. Yeah. And all right, Kaiwen will go down to two prize cards. 
with this knockout. Do you see the energy switch? Going on to Dedenne. <laughs> Trying to figure out where to go. I think he's just burning cards. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't want to run into a reset stamp. Yeah. Which makes sense. You'd rather have your cards in play than in your deck where you can't access them. And now uh, Medi looking at his discard pile, saying, how many fire energy do I have in here? Setting up for that infinity from Victini Prism Star. Seems like a stretch, but if he can get to 12 fire energy in his discard pile, he can knock out Pikachu and Zekrom with that attack. We saw Tord earlier today with 11. And he's trying to do the math. Uh, he's trying to say, all right, if I promote this Pokemon, welder energy to it, then retreat, that gets an energy in the discard. Uh, I can giant hearth, discard an energy, get in the discard. I can use nine tails ability, put two fire energy mm -hmm. in the discard. He's trying to add up, do I get to 12 and win the game? Seems like a stretch, but I don't know how many fire are in his discard yet, so yeah. we'll see. We saw him we'll sit back thumb past out. quite a few of them, but yeah. it didn't look like 10 plus to me. Right. He's also one energy in play short of dropping down something like Welder, Energy, and Heatran GX. Looks like he's got six fire energy in the discard right now, so he would need six more. Okay. Now we're up There's to seven. One. Let's see... Gonna grab the two fire Two win his prizes. I think he almost, uh, he kind of wants something that has a two retreat cost. I don't know if he's got anything though. He would love to be able to go like welder two energy to something with the two retreat, switch into it, and retreat the two energy off, attach for turn. And even then, it might just be. You're not hitting 12. An unreasonable dream. Here's an acro bike. Could discard another way. that way. Oh, actually, opposite discard the welder instead. It's got one in hand already. Ooh, Heatran GX coming in. You can see the welder go on to the big Heatran. And he's Attach actually a turn. attaching a third energy to it. What is he does planning he have here? a switch that he can retreat? I mean, he just attached for turns, so he wouldn't be able to use Infinity. Right. Maybe just setting up for a win on the next turn. Yeah, in which case he needs to get something into the active that yeah. is a single prize. Ooh, he's sending out Heatran GX. Oh, he's just going to think, Doesn't he just lose the tag and bolts? knock out the Zapdos, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Kaiwen takes game number one with Tag Bolt GX, just straight up 200 damage okay. to knock out Heatran GX. That may have been a situation where Mady was just overthinking things and... Uh, Ignoring the forgot, obvious. Yeah, forgot the the thing on board where he loses. Hmm. Happens to all of us. If you do get two, three, there. four steps ahead of yourself, sometimes you forget step one, which is not losing to what is already there. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. It's um, about a 20-minute game one, so you can shake it off pretty easily and move on to game number two. It's always interesting to watch Pikachu and Zekrom versus Reshram and Charizard. As we've mentioned a couple times over the course of this event already, people cannot agree on who wins the matchup. But I gotta say, I've seen Pikachu and Zekrom win a lot yeah, so far. Yeah, it seems like Pikachu and Zekrom is just the faster deck and therefore averages a higher win rate. But <laughs> I mean. Turns out you just turn two full blitz and everything falls yeah. into place. Then again, I don't have. 100 games of the matchup to tell you definitively yeah. it's it's 60 40 this way but and every deck list is different yeah true that's probably the the biggest issue right now is there's no standardized lists to sort of fall back on yeah as the pinnacle yeah, every list is different every player is different it's hard to get a good read on what actually happens we got the greens list versus the chirachi builds with nine tails and yep yeah all right, Cora, what do you think Medi has to do to climb back into this series? He's down one game. What's he got to do? Well, he started behind that one, right? Uh, Kaiwen was able to get the first knockout. Full blitzed on turn two. So I would like to see Medi threaten with Rush Ram and Charizard to have his own attack by turn two. That involves Welder turn one. Um, and the problem there is you're hitting for 230 with Flare Strike. 
Picaram is 240 hit points. We saw earlier um, Rahul ready with the dojo to be able to get that extra 10 with a fighting energy. You're doing a lot for 10 extra damage just to be able to get that one hit knockout onto a Pikachu and Zekrom. Um, the fact of the matter is he's just got to go faster. I think that makes sense. Going first always helps as well. Yeah, you get that first energy attachment. You're able to declare that first attack. Um, I mean, he was left in a situation in the last game where he was having to outrage and then just sort of sacrifice his Rush Ram and Charizard, which is not not ideal. Yeah. But here he's started a Vulpix. Yeah, that's not the worst. His hand seems decent, uh, at least playable. He's got the Cherish Ball, which always means you're going to be doing something on your first turn. Uh, when your deck is filled with Dedenne GX, you can at least draw a new hand at the very least. But uh, I think he's got Welder in hand, maybe one or two Fire Energy, so he's going to be able to do something here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but as you said, I think he really needs to power up Rectram and Charizard. And uh, having a conversation at the table, he's saying, you no, know, it's kind of weird you're moving cards to the front of your deck while you're searching, and he's saying, yeah, I'm putting the Pokemon to the front of my deck so I can count which ones are prized. Uh, but it can look suspicious yes, sometimes. It looks sure. like you're kind of organizing your deck. So as just, long as uh, there's a sufficient shuffle afterwards and everything is randomized, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, just be aware when you do that. It, it can look suspicious. Shouldn't being the operative word. Yeah. Sometimes for reasons it does. And he's taking a look through once again, making sure no important cards are prized. Um, I've actually wondered this myself. Once you get into best of three scenarios, is the time you use searching for your prizes uh, worth it when a lot of games end up in ties? Um, obviously, the optimal thing to do, the best strategy is to figure out what cards are prized. But yeah. uh, does spending like a minute or two on your first search, ultimately end up in you tying matches later? I don't know the answer to that question, but it's something I've thought about. I Plus, I'm lazy. Reasonable to think about. I'm lazy, so I don't want to check what's priced. Well, I'm going to let them find the answers for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think you're, you're looking for what's prized, but you're also taking that time while you're searching the deck to think about what's my next move, what's my macro game plan, yeah. as opposed to just the, the micro of, you know, picking your GX Pokemon to get off of the Cherish Ball. So you have a Welder for just one energy. Not where you want to be. You want to get the full two energy off of that. Draws the giant hearth a little bit too late. We do see the second fire energy come down. And he's got a lot of stuff he can do. But is any of it worth doing this turn? There's a couple Pokemon communication, a Dedenne GX. He's already played a supporter for the turn, so does he want to dead a change here or just pass the turn? It looks like he says pass after the switch. Oh, never mind. I should not guess what people are saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's going to go ahead and discard two Pokecoms and a Fire Crystal for a fresh six and go from there. He's got a Welder for next turn, but no energy. He can pull energy off of the Giant Hearth, however, well, so that's a comfort. Didn't use Giant Hearth. That's surprising to me. If that stadium gets countered, he might be in some trouble. So we see... I think he drew into another one, but I'm not oh, positive. Uh, that could be true, yes. All right, Volkner coming in. Uh, of course, with Pikachu and Zekrom, the dream is always the turn one full blitz when you go second. It is possible with Thunder Mountain Prism Star. Uh, it has to involve Tapu Koko Prism Star. So you can either do, uh, if you start with Pikachu and Zekrom, you can uh, Tapu Koko Prism Star, Dance of the Ancients, get two lightning energy on your bench Pokemon, play two energy switches, Move the two lightning to your active, attach for the turn, and then full blitz. You can also pull it off with one energy switch and Thunder Mountain Prism Star. It's not likely, but it does happen. And when it happens, you feel great. There's a big difference between a turn one full blitz and a turn two. Yeah. A lot harder to respond to the turn one. <laughs> so we'll see if he's got the pieces. Like you were saying, it's, it's hard to do. All right, so we do see... Kaiwen debating if he wants to... Is that a Sigilyph? Uh, yes. Yes, it, it is. 
Yeah, sigilith. It's sigilith. <laughs> you just said that, yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's a sigilith. Why? Uh, it can be an interesting kind of wall in some matchups. I don't know if he's playing Psychic Energy, but mm. if it's hit by a Pokemon GX, it deals that much damage back to the GX. So okay. in, in certain matchups, you can just send it out and be like, look, you're going to knock it out. But like if you're against Reshram and Charizard, you're like, mm. be my guest. Flare Strike my Sigilith for 230 and hit yourself for 230, and then I'll just finish it off with a Zapdos or something. Yeah, you get a three prize, they get a two. Yeah, I don't know exactly what matchup that's for, but I have seen it pop up in Malamar decks where you can actually attack with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the plan is here. Maybe you can, um, with Raichu and Alolan Raichu, you can Lightning Ride and switch into it. That could be a good strategy. Sure, something that protects the rest of your bench. Yeah. All right, we are going to see Lysander Labs. Send oh. that giant hearth to the discard. So I think the turn one full blitz dream is gone. Yeah. And he's going to pass the turn. Lysander Labs is interesting to me in a deck with Jirachi. I think he plays a skateboard too. He does. Those don't. Those cards don't work together. A skateboard and Lysander Labs. But Lysander Labs is an important card uh, in several matchups. Mm -hmm. Shuts off the spell tag of the Giratina. The Malamar decks uh, turns off Shedinja. <laughs> it's a big one. And it could just turn off opposing escape boards yeah. and things like that. And we are seeing a fair bit of Jirachi still here. Yeah, choice helmets pop up sometimes. And it's just a good counter stadium. You do need counter stadiums in pretty much every deck these days. Mm -hmm. Or at least a Marshadow to blow the stadium up. Sometimes both. Yeah. I mean, there are some very powerful stadiums right now, especially with the addition of Giant Hearth. All right, here we see another Welder. So he does get to four energy on turn two. If he can find nine tails and a couple fire energy, he can use that nine temptations ability to bring out mm. perhaps that Pikachu and Zekrom and hit it for 230 damage before it's able to full blitz. Looks Kinda. like a Pokemon communication and maybe an extra Vulpix in hand could do the trick. Yeah, that can do it. As long as it's not prized. And I think I saw Ninetales in there. So this is going to flip the table on what happened in the first game. This time, Medi's going to be the one attacking his opponent's tag team first. And we'll see how that changes the dynamic of the matchup. I'm guessing it's going to be good for, for Medi. I think so. <laughs> this, regardless of which way you think this matchup leans, it does seem to be determined by speed. Who gets that first attack? Who's able to follow up on that first attack? And yes, we're seeing that because partially Medi was able to go first. He had consecutive welder turns. Yep. Which tag team will come out on top? We'll find out. Like, here is Nine Tails at Nine Temptations. Now, the question is, does he go after Pikachu and Zekrom? I think that's the right choice, but you do have an option to go after something like Zero or GX and just take a clean knockout, grab two prize cards. And he's actually not sure what he wants to do. This is not a trivial decision. Yeah. Those prize cards could be really helpful. Yeah. But if you get that Pikachu and Zekrom out of the way, you don't have to worry about maybe a lot of that setup. All right, he's going after Zeraora. See one more Denny change. The Denny GX has exploded in popularity after the standard format rotation. Yeah, its stock has gone way up. Yeah. And an escape board goes on to Denny GX. And the fifth energy, that is going to threaten Double Blaze GX for 300 on the following turn. But this turn he's using Flare Strike for the knockout, and that may be why he decided to go after Zara Aura GX instead of Pikachu and Zekrom, knowing that next turn he could just Double Blaze for the knockout. As long as he's got the Fire Energy to be able to Nine Temptations, and uh, knowing that he's not going to lose the Rush Ram and Charizard this turn, he should feel pretty good about his position here. I sure would. Although with lightning decks, you never know what's going to happen. 
Kaiwen could just go. Quad electro power. Exactly. <laughs> 270, ha. Yeah. He only needs three electro powers if he uses Tag Bolt. True. And I'm sure he just wants to attack. <laughs> that would be the main thing. I do see several of them in hand, as well as a Volkner, which can fetch another one. But we're still worried about energy here. How do we get it? How do we play it? Yeah, he's going to need Thunder Mountain Prism Star, Tapu Koko Prism Star, one of those two. Uh, you wonder if he could power up a Raichu and a Lolan Raichu. That could be an alternate strategy to try to paralyze Rush Ram and Charizard GX's turn with the Tandem Shock. Yeah. Okay, it really depends on what I sell. <laughs> Kaiwen kind of narrating his turn zero. Uh -huh. This really depends on what, what I stellar, stellar wish for. So let's do that first. It's kind of... Take I mean, it's nice to hear. Let him just do it for us. <laughs> oh, he's probably like, oh, that's an easy card to discard to Electromagnetic. Yeah. Magnetic. <laughs> Definitely does not want that. It is an interesting um, dynamic to consider when you're playing against someone who's very talkative. Can that potentially be tilting in any way? <laughs> oh, I, I wonder. I'm yeah. sure it can be. Some people get real annoyed, yeah. I mean, some people are just more vocal than others. Yeah, it depends on your personality, honestly. Uh, some people love to chat at the table, have some fun. Uh, it helps them relax to talk mm -hmm. more. Some people will not say a word uh, unless to uh, announce their attack. Yeah, to knock declare out your what their intent is. <laughs> yeah. And I think as the stakes get higher, we so tend to see players get a little less talkative. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, players like Kaiwan, even... When he makes it to the highest levels, he's still mostly the same. He still tries to chat up his opponent. He's a young guy. He's having fun. Yeah. Just a, a bit of a personality. Indeed. But, you know, it's, it's nice to see all types really sitting up there playing <laughs> the game at a high level. Now we see him, Volkner, for the stadium nav. He needs to get aheads here to find Thunder Mountain Prism Star. We've seen some devastating double tails. He does hit a has. Well, yeah, the second flip wouldn't matter. <laughs> <He's only laughs> like uh, you gotta flip two coins. He's like, ah, uh, second one doesn't matter. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just grabbing. Card, Kai I'm just grabbing Thunder flip Mountain. Two coins. I'm not grabbing another stadium. All right, there is Raichu and a little bit Raichu. Does he want to go for it? He's got the tag switch and also Tapu Koko Prism Star. Looks like. He's got some options now with that Thunder Mountain. He can full oh, blitz okay. or he can. So if he's got a switch, he can. Oh, yeah. Electro he power. He needs to draw yep. a switch off of this custom catcher. And he missed. Oh, he could dear. have used Lightning Ride GX for 280 and knocked out Restroom and Charizard GX. But instead, he's going to pass the turn. Oh, my gosh. And this is going to fall apart very quickly. If Medi has two fire energy for nine temptations and another one to power up Double Blaze GX, he can just wipe out Raichu and Alolan Raichu, and that'll be game. There's the giant hearth to be able to find two more fire energy. He's oh, got yeah. two in hand already. This should be easy. That's it. Boy, if Kaiwen got that knockout, though, I think he was going to be in the driver's seat. There would be no energy mm -hmm. in play for his opponent. He took a gamble. It did not pay off, and now he's going to pay the price. And yeah, he just says, that's it. Yep. Let's go to game three. Okay. He says, huge risk, I just had to try. And you know what? To be able to recognize that position and recognize that you do have an out, to be able to flip a bad game on its head and, and put yeah. it in your favor, sometimes you got to go for it. Sometimes it's not going to work out. But Absolutely. the times that it does, you are going to feel like a freaking genius. <laughs> yeah, that's part of playing well in tournaments, uh, understanding when it's time to just mm -hmm. take a risk. Uh, you understand this could look really stupid. Um, yeah. I could play a lot of things and then literally do nothing. I and could have my Twitch turn. chat yelling at me saying, what were you thinking? <laughs> or I could be a hero, draw the switch and knock out that Rush Ram and Charizard. And win the game because of it. Yeah. And the thing is, when you get it, like people, people remember that. <laughs> They really do. Yeah. Those are the kind of things that can boost your confidence, that can 
have you play in your best go in the rest of the rounds today? Because obviously sitting at 3-1, this is a very good record and, and potentially a, a top eight making record, depending on how the rest of the day goes for Kaiwin. Uh, but they've only got about 12 minutes to be able to get a conclusion to this series with game number three. Got to go fast. We've seen a lot of draws today. Yep. And these guys are both in a good position, but a draw would put them in a significantly worse one. Indeed. Yeah. Um, in So in that situation, I think it's almost a given that you need to take that risk. He's really far behind. Uh, there's kind of no downside to just going for it. I and mean, if you play a normal game, you're probably just going to lose anyway. So might as well just go for it. Gives you a chance to win. Um, and all right. Game number three, well underway. Kaiwin's already done a lot of stuff off camera. <laughs> uh, got a switch into Jirachi. There's so much happening right now. He's played like five cards already. But from Take my word Eddie's for it. face, you wouldn't know it. <laughs> it's cool as a cucumber. He's got Mr. Chatterbox sitting across from him, and he's, you know what, yes. he's, just, he's playing his game. <laughs> they are very expensive cards. Yeah. It's a beautiful deck. Yeah. This thing got the promo Jirachi. He's got style. <laughs> that thing, whew. Got to crack a lot of building battle boxes for that. <laughs> it's worth it, though. Oh, yeah. All right, so Kaiwen is kicking off game number three with an electromagnetic <laughs> radar. Uh, he's already played an energy, played a switch, played a lily. Used a Stellar Wish, and here we are with Electromagnetic Radar. You just see a field full of gold, full arts, rainbow rares. They're all over the place. And he's going to pass his turn. This is the difference between going first and second. You can afford to just have this kind of casual turn where you play a lot of stuff, but only get one energy in play and say, yeah, I'll get the attack off next turn. Don't worry Met about it. Did enough. But well, it's possible, but unlikely, for a Pikachu and Zekrom tag team to be able oh. to attack on first turn. It's Whoa, boy. Medi's oh hand my. is miserable. Thank goodness he has that Cherish Ball, because that's it. Uh, he's got nothing else he can really play. Thankfully, his Dedenne GX, well, he started with one. He's got one in his deck. Otherwise, that would have been disastrous. Uh, and once again, he is checking to see what is prized. Yeah, he consistently pulls all the Pokemon to the front. He just played three to NAGX, it looks like. And he's definitely going to grab one here. His hand is like four fire energy, a Pokemon communication, and a fire crystal. Yeah, let's try that again. Yeah. Would like a, yeah. a welder. I would like six new cards, please. Would like a Rush Ram and Charizard. <laughs> These are defective. I would like six new ones, please. Excuse me, Judge, my cards are broken. <laughs> Not in a good way, either. Turns out they're, they're broken bad, not broken good. All right, so Dedenne GX. Man, there's just all sorts of rainbow rares floating out here, huh? Rainbow Dedenne GX. All three of Kaiwen's GXs are rainbow. Lots of style going yeah. on here. I mean, I appreciate it. <laughs> Makes me smile. Yeah. And Medi gonna attach the fire energy before throwing it all away. Oi. Discard five, draw six. <laughs> it's like, that's, wow. <laughs> now that is why you play Dedenne GX. Sometimes you just need a reset button. <laughs> uh, looks like a Vulpix and a Nine Tails. Okay, this Acrobike better be good. You Another. can't use Deddy Change twice in the same turn. No, but I think his hand is bad enough. He needs to take it. This is not good. He does not have... Well, okay, he's got Chirachi. Yeah, he can he can retreat out Stellar Wish for the turn. Or... He's trying to figure out yeah. if he wants to switch mm -hmm. or just retreat. There is value to having the energy in play because of Heatran GX. I think it's probably better to play Switch. Tartanator as well can pull energy from yeah. all of your Pokemon. And this could be a big Stellar Wish. Remember, he has not played a supporter card yet. I literally said, excuse me, judge, my cards are broken like a minute ago, and somebody already tweeted it at me. <laughs> I 
You guys are quick on the draw. I'll give it to you. That's power, good. The power of the internet, huh? Whew. They fast. All right, so he finds a welder in the top five cards. But, boy, it's not good when you have to welder onto a uh, Vulpix, uh, a Dedenne GX, um. just to draw three cards. You'll do it when you need to, but that's been kind of the story of this turn. Welder says attach up to two energy. Yeah. Do you have to attach it if it's there? Uh, so you can attach, as long as you can attach at least one energy, okay. you can play the card. Gotcha. Uh, but if you have two in your hand, you don't have to play both. Okay. You can choose, you can to, choose play to do one. one. Your hand is private knowledge. Makes sense. So he's going to attach one and draw three. Well, gets Victini Prism Star. As well as the giant hearth. Yep. So I don't I think mean, there's a reason to play that quite yet. Slowly but surely, drawing out of the bad start, <laughs> but still not anywhere near the setup that he needed. He was already going to be at a bit of a disadvantage because he was going second. So this needed to be a three energy attachment onto a Reshiram and Charizard turn one, and it yep. ended up not looking anything like that. Okay, big stadium nav. He needs to get one heads, and he gets it. You see the fist pump? He knows he needs that Thunder Mountain Prism Star. You gotta go into turbo mode here. Gotta start using full blitz, turn two, and put the pressure on. The clock is winding down. Your opponent had a bad start. It's time to get aggressive. Smell blood in the water. Need to find it was recently shark switch. week, so I guess take advantage of it. <laughs> they have sharks in Australia. Probably. Probably. They got giant spiders. They do. The huntsmans. <laughs> oh, he does have the switch. So we see the lily. Four cards, needs to find a lightning energy, and He's he does. He's got it. All right, this is huge. Full blitz, Full blitz turn two, knockout. Switch. Yeah, Kyle's going very quick. He, he asked the judge, I believe, how much time do we have left? Judge yeah. told him just under nine. Um, clearly, that was about four ago. So he, he wants a conclusion to this game. He wants yeah. to win fast. All right, so we do see full blitz. One knockout taken. Five prizes remain for Kaiwen. And boy. Two custom catchers, two energy switches. Eddie needs something. He's going to play down his third Dedenne GX this turn, I think. And I wonder if this is a spot where you're intentionally retreating off an energy for Victini Prism Star. Four in the discard already. Five would be 100 damage on Infinity. Yep. I mean, it's it's not nothing. He could get six in there. He could threaten a two-turn onto Pikachu and Zekrom, but nice. there would be no world where you're able to attack twice Yeah. with the same Victini Prism. Doesn't feel good. Uh, skateboard, so he's going to retain the energy. Uh, attach another one? Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. He's going for Heatran GX. So he's still got uh, a decent play here. If he can Deddy change into a Welder and then get Heatran GX, he can use that Hot Burn GX for 250 and knock out this Pikachu and Zekrom. So all those silly attachments to Dedenne over the past couple turns. They have meaning now. Yeah. I think they're having a dispute over... Attaching for the turn, it seems. Yeah. He attached to his active. It looked like he took his hand off the card, and, and that typically means it. you have played the card. You can't undo that. As long as your hand remains on the card, you're free to move it around. But if his hand left the fire energy, then it needs to stay on the Dedenne. Yeah. Yep. And <laughs> that appears to be the ruling. But I, I don't think it's really gonna matter. Medi's very far oh. behind. If this game's gonna have a conclusion, wow. it's not gonna be in his favor. This is gonna be a big six cards. If he can hit Welder, two energy, and Heatran GX, he can get the knockout with Hot Burn. And I think he's done it. He has drawn into the Welder. So a horrible first turn turns into perhaps a very good GX knockout, a tag team knockout at that. There is Pokemon communication. Send Hence. back that Reshiram and Charizard. Pull out that Heatran. 
And it does burn up his GX attack and puts all of his energy onto the Heatran, but it takes down Pikachu and Zekrom and perhaps gives him a chance to win. And again, one that, uh, a Pokemon that you're just consistently kind of impressed by. Um, not everybody's running it, but it seems like... His board looks horrible, maybe they'd but... they'd be having a better time if they did. His board looks horrendous, but he's just been able to attach energy to these Dedenne GX, and then he's going to soak them all up with the Burning Road ability on Heatran GX. He can just, mm -hmm. out of nowhere, do a bunch of damage, and once the Heatran gets knocked out, it puts five fire in the discard for Victini Prism Star. This could actually be... Could work game. out, this yeah. This could be a game. It looked ugly, but it might be turning around. See, there's four fire in the discard. Would be nine after the Heatran gets knocked out. Yeah. So as soon as Heatran becomes your active, you may move as many fire energy from other Pokemon onto it as you'd like. Five energy with Hot Burn GX is enough to knock out a Pikachu and Zekrom. Sure is. All right. Hot okay. Burn incinerates Pikachu and Zekrom. Three prizes from Eddie. Oof, okay. And just like that, he's one tag team knockout away from being able to secure a win in the series. Do you see the reset stamp from Kaiwen though? That's gonna slow down Medi after that big knockout. And uh, we wish. are just about coming up on time in the round. Kaiwen doing whatever he can. He's gotta be careful to retreat and then play that Lysander Labs in his hand. Otherwise it would turn off his own escape board. I assume he wants to counter that giant hearth, but no, he's discarding the Lysander Labs with the electromagnetic radar. Looks like he may be going for a Dedenne GX. He's already played Electro Power, so if he switches into a Raichu and a Lolan Raichu GX, the Tandem Shock will get the knockout. But yeah, he's in some danger, I guess. As long as Mehdi does not have to bench Reshiram and Charizard. If Kaiwin gets the knockout here, he goes down to three prizes. He will still need to take two additional knockouts to be able to win the game. And he's only going to have two turns to do it after time is called. Okay, there is Tandem Shock for the knockout. 190 exactly. Down to three prizes. Both players at three prizes. Yeah, our timer's at zero. I don't know if there was a time extension or anything like that. There was some time spent on debating certain calls, but I, I don't know enough that it would result in a time extension. Right. Things were resolved pretty quickly. See the giant hearth stadium card was left in play. Discarding another giant hearth to pull out two fire energy. You need two energy to attack with infinity. And then it's 20 damage times each fire energy in your discard pile, which right now should be around nine for Medi. He's gonna need a welder as well to uh, attach both energy in the same turn. He's got one acro bike. It's a cherish ball. I don't think there's a fourth to any GX in here. But he might wish there was. <laughs> That'd be pretty good right about now. Dump a couple energy in the discard. Draw six cards. Mike takes a Cherish Ball off of the Acrobike. Discarding a Reshiram and Charizard GX in the process, but no Welder this turn. And now Medi's gonna have to decide what to do. Um, all right, and time has been called at this point. Okay. Medi is turn zero. And we'll have three turns after that. So both players will have essentially two turns to have a chance to win this game. Start off with this Jirachi using Stellar Wish. And he does find Welder. All right. That's really important. He's trying to set up for a tag team GX knockout on what will be turn two of our extra turns. That is the only way he's going to win this game. Seems pretty likely, yeah. It's going to have to be with Victini, Prism Star. Mm -hmm. 
getting, what, 13 in the discard? Uh, 12, you can go after Pikachu and Zekrom. Yeah. Already have the Nine Tails out. 260 HP on the Raichu and the Lolan Raichu. Now, the danger here from Eddie, if he doesn't win this turn, uh, if Kaiwen has... Um, Custom catchers? Well, that would be bad, yes. But also, if he's got some combination of a bunch of, like, tag switches, energy switches, top of Coco, Prism Star, and he powers up Pikachu and Zekrom's tag bolt, he that can too. simply can get win. a three-prize knockout and win the game. Okay. I believe his prizes are a couple energy switches. Yeah, if I remember right, there were two energy switch prized, but I don't think he's used Tapu Koko Prism Star yet. So it would take a tag switch, maybe another one, Tapu Koko, and uh, an attachment for the turn. Uh, Thunder Mountain is already gone. There's an energy switch in hand. It's been a communication for that Tapu Koko Prism Star, I think. Okay, so that energy switch, switch was the last prize he'd taken. It's tag switch in his deck. Oh, he's just going to grab Zapdos, it looks like. I'm not sure what else is in his hand, but he certainly could go for the win here. Mm -hmm. He played a very brave line in the previous game, though, and he did get punished for it. <laughs> so I wonder if maybe that's put him off of taking a big risk right now. Oh, I think he may have just missed it. I think he had it in his hand. He had Volkner, Energy Switch, Communication for Tapu Koko. It. Yeah, I think he might have just missed the line here. There's no Mew in play, so Tag Bolt GX could have done it. Did he use the Tapu Koko Prism earlier? No, it's still in his deck. Yeah, okay. Then it appears that Kaiwen has missed an opportunity to take three prizes. Yeah. And now we'll give Medi one more chance to be able to pull up that Pikachu and Zekrom GX, have 12 fire energy in the discard pile, be able to get his nine tails out of the active as well, bring up Victini and Infinity for the game. I think so, yeah. I'm just thinking about it, right? There was an energy switch in hand. There was a lightning on the Pikachu and Zekrom already. Mm -hmm. That's two, you attach, that's three. Tapu Koko is four, tag switch is six. Yeah, I think you get there. I am not seeing the necessary cards in Medi's hand. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, bit of a bummer for him. It's looking well, like see. it's a couple energy, another giant hearth, a cherish ball. Yeah, he may just be passing and hoping his opponent doesn't win. I think that's what he's got to do. He's got another giant hearth in hand, but of course you cannot play a stadium card uh, if one with the same name is already in play. Mm -hmm. Gonna use the nine temptations to bring out Dedenny GX and pass the turn. If Kaiwen has double custom catcher. He's got it. And a way to switch out. Volkner gonna ride the lightning energy. Lightning the Dedenne. ride for the game. Or you can just tandem shock. Take your pick. And Kaiwen right. advances to 4, 0, and 1. 13 match points. Perhaps heading to the top eight at the World Championships. He's on his way. Going to need a couple.